right, so if we're splatter plastic, we're gonna do my questions for the horror vinyl countdown. What was the first score I bought? The first score I bought wasn't a score, it was a theme song, but it was from a movie and it was one of my favourite, still is one of my favourite movie theme songs. Go first as well, Ray Parker Jr. I was, I, I don't, can't remember how old I was, I was only a nipper, but ran out, seen this. Still glows in the dark to this day. I often just like put a lamp on it and just look at it and go, <laughs> glows in the dark. So Ray Parker Jr. However, not very horrific, is it? So the first proper, proper score that I got was Nightbreed. When Nightbreed come out, Danny Elfman's score to Nightbreed is phenomenal. And I was like, I need to get this. I need to run out and buy this. So I ran out. Went to HMV and lo and behold, there was this soundtrack section in HMV. All these CDs, because I, I, I didn't even think about them being on vinyl because it was only like yay big, like I'm that big now, but I was this big then. Um, so ran out and got Nightbreed on CD and I'm flicking through and I'm like, oh shit, oh shit, there's this movie, oh there's this movie, there's this movie. So I went back a couple of days later and picked up these two. So we got. Cannibal Ferox, back to a zombie, and I also got Cannibal Holocaust. So Cannibal Heavy Weekend in my house that weekend. Um, these give me the bug, and I started collecting loads of like CD soundtracks and stuff like that, which have all gone now, all gone to the wayside because I discovered proper vinyl years later, and I was like, man, I want to get all these again on vinyl, and I did. But the first one that I bought, not to cover the CD, was. Death Waltz's The Void. When this come out, I jumped on it. Absolutely jumped on it because the score to The Void is pure synthwave bliss. It's so 80s. The film is so 80s. Everything about this is perfect, man. It could have been brought out as a back into the thing back in the day. If you haven't seen The Void, go and see The Void. If you haven't heard The Void, go and listen to The Void because you will have your socks well and truly blown away it is phenomenal so this one that i got was the blue blob or the void variant or something like that i think if memory serves i might be wrong i think it was like 500 copies of it and it went like that i was lucky enough to get one so the first one that i bought was very very limited the void favorite composers I'm not going to go very obvious on this one because everybody knows about John Williams. Everybody knows about Eddie Morricone. Everybody talks about John Carpenter till they are blue in the face. So I'm going to go with three different composers that are not they're not like mad like weird different composers. But I kind of if you're watching this, you might learn like other people. You know what I mean? So first one's got to be Claudio Simonetti and his Goblin output his goblin soundtracks so he's got tenebrae he's got fucking demons he's not that that was with goblin it was just with claudio simonetti he's got profondo rosso oh, man, the, everything every superior everything that goblin do is gold so if you've never checked out goblin go and check out goblin because pure pure italian giallo music it is beautiful Backed onto Goblin's got to be Fabio Frizzi. So, the way that Goblin done a lot of Dario Argento stuff, Fabio Frizzi done a lot of Lucio Fulci stuff. So, he done, like, The Beyond. He done, didn't do House by the Cemetery, he done um, Gates of Hell, or how, um, City of the Living Dead. New York Ripper. Loads of stuff, man. Fabio Frizzi. Um, John Harrison, most famously for the Day of the Dead soundtrack. He done Creepshow as well. Absolutely phenomenal scores. But my one that I really, really like, and I've not heard anything else by him, but the one album that he did put out has got a special place in my heart. I absolutely love Riz Ortolani's Cannibal Holocaust. It's a brutal shit movie, but the soundtrack is so, so good. And I don't think Riz Ortolani gets a lot of love, to be honest with you, because it's obviously the soundtrack to a very, very controversial movie. But it's amazing. It's it's one of my favourite soundtracks, favourite scores. 
one of my favourite composers. I do have to do a bit more of a dig into um, his other catalogue because every time I want to listen to this, I'll just stick this on. I won't be asked about what else he's done because Callow Holocaust. Brilliant. Sorry, guys. I bowled up. I forgot a question. And it was my question, so I'm a little bit embarrassed about it. But, anyhow. <laughs> What is my favorite record label? So many to choose from with every one of them having a little piece of something that I love. So you've got the big two, obviously, Waxworks, Death Waltz Mondo. You've got One Way Static. You've got 1984 Productions. You've got Television. You've got so many little boutique labels out there that are putting out so many good little releases that it's hard to really choose because everybody brings something to the table, for instance, television the attention to the detail that these guys put in and the actual colors that they produce on the vinyl records are second to none they are amazing my copy of basket case and neon maniacs and the the, the the attention to detail and the artwork that they put in is just amazing 1984 productions that release that these other children of the corn absolutely amazing the artwork that they put out, the colorway of the record, brilliant. One Way Static, all the limited stuff that I've got from the One Way Static, like the Necromantic soundtrack and the Cannibal Holocaust, now Cannibal Ferox soundtrack that was put out by them, the Hills of Eyes. They give you little bits and bobs with it that make the packaging a lot better. I mean, the record's a record, everybody, anyone could release the record because they all sound amazingly clean. The big two, Waxworks, obviously, big massive label, put out so many cool releases over the years. Personally, I feel like they've dropped the ball over the last couple of years, and now that's probably down to the pandemic or press and plant issues or whatever. Yeah. But I think they've took the foot off the off the the the. the took the foot off the, the, the pedal a little bit to be honest with you over the last couple of years they've just been doing re-releases of re-releases of re-releases which is cool if you haven't got the, the the original record that they put out but they're not really for me they're not really doing much that i'm interested in i mean obviously i've got the library cues of uh, dawn of the dead which was fantastic so i've got a handy to unfortunately mondo and death waltz were my favourite label because the you got all the big releases like Halloween and Hellraiser and Videodrome and stuff like that, but they also put out stuff like Living Dead at the Manchester Morgan, Zombie Flesh Eaters and New York Ripper and little releases. So they, they were they were going across the gamut of 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 genre, you know what I mean? They were going from some big massive massive labels like big blockbuster movies right down to little underground jallos that you'd never even heard of you know what i mean they, they were the best horror score label for me for me personally and i think that's going to come back with the introduction of made by mutant records i can't wait to see what this company is doing because it's everybody that made mondo death waltz mondo death waltz so if they keep that traction up I'm really excited for what they're doing. So if I was doing these questions a year from now, I'd probably be putting Made by Mutant Records as my number one because I've, I've just got a good feeling that they're going to be starting to like reinvigorate what Death Waltz Mondo was. So yeah, I'm going to go with Death Waltz Mondo with a caveat for Made by Mutant Records. Second place has got to be Waxwork and third's got to be Television, I'm going to say. But Death Waltz Mondo, favourite label of all time. Collecting variants, yay or nay? For me, absolutely not. If I were a record, I will go out and buy that record. I will buy the variant that I want. I'll buy the variant that appeals to me the most. However, there are people out there like Tim Man who likes to fill his collection full of Return of the Living Dead records, which is cool. If you want to do that, it's your money, man. If that's what makes you smile, knock yourself out. If you want to have 75 records, all with the same music, all with the same colour, cover and a different like colorway of vinyl that's completely up to yourself who are we to judge people that want to do like varying collecting that's absolutely fine i personally do not however 
The caveat to that is Halloween. I do own quite a few copies of Halloween, but in my defense, they're all a little bit different. So some are mono, some are stereo, some are OG presses, some are not OG presses, some are this, some are that. So even though I don't collect variants personally, I do own a couple of records that are essentially the same music, but I don't look at them as variants. I've also got like two copies of like Halloween 3 because they're different records essentially. So even though no, I don't collect variants, I have got quite a few variants. <laughs> so I don't, unless it's something. I don't know. I, 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 I suppose I do. I don't know. I'm arguing with myself now. So in my heart, I say no. On my record shelf, I say yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if I do collect variants or not. I'm confused. Rarest score that I own. Rarest record. It's not the rarest record that I own, but it's the it's the, the definitely the rarest score that I own is um, Wendy Carlos's The Shining. So my good lady wife bought me this for Christmas. She must have paid a pretty penny for it because it ain't friggin' cheap, this one. And I am proud to own it. Yeah, so the rarest score in my collection is The Shining. If you want to learn more about The Shining, go back, watch our Shining review on YouTube. It's a doozy, but a rarest record. Welcome to The Shining Club. What am I currently listening to? Um, currently listening to three different things. I've got three different scores on rotation at the minute. Um, I already had it out before. I've been listening to a lot of Cannibal Holocaust lately. I don't know why. I just fancied Cannibal Holocaust, and it's just kind of been like, let's listen to this. Let's listen to this again. But then, over the last couple of months, I've also picked up The Warriors. So that's been bouncing in there as well, because everybody needs a bit of Warriors in their life, and I'm so happy when Waxworks re-released this. And um, the final one was just after Christmas. Yeah, man. The um, 3LP version of the original Library Hughes to Dawn of the Dead. It is a belter. Three records as well. This is going to keep you going, man. If it was um, a couple of weeks later, the one record that I will definitely have on heavy rotation, and it's just been released by the, the new, the new mutant records, will be Society of the Snow. If you haven't listened to Society of the Snow, go and listen to it, and then go and show Spence some love, because go and buy it man, go and buy it from like, I think it's called like I Am Mutant or Mutant Records or something, it's basically the resurrection of like Mondo and Death Waltz doing it properly again, so happy for you guys, so happy for it, first day buy for me, as soon as that was, that was released I was like yes, it's a really haunting score which we will definitely, definitely be reviewing once that comes, um, pre-orders are up now, go get it. So that's it. That was my horror vinyl countdown. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody else as we throw out messages to all sorts of weird people. Um, hopefully you'll all get back to us and we can stick them all on this big happy playlist and we can all uh, get a little bit closer. It'll be lovely. Okay, until next time, stay tuned, stay safe. SP, out. <laughs>